It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about mid-year financial wellness check-in. It's halfway through the year. Have you checked in on your finances? Bob and I are going to give you a checklist of things to think about to make sure you're up to date halfway through the year with your finances. We're going to talk about money mistakes. We're going to talk about mistakes you don't want to make when you're over 50. The stakes are higher that are going to derail your retirement. These are ones you definitely have to avoid. Bob and I are going to break them down for you. And we have this week's financial propaganda. We're going to talk about some of the news out there this week in politics, bond funds, things you need to do with your portfolio to make sure you're on track. Check it out. We've got a great show for you. You know, Bob, one of the most important beliefs when it comes to financial planning is not just establishing your goals, but monitoring those goals and assessing your progress is kind of a tenet here at Payne Capital Management. So I thought we could discuss some simple things that you should be including in your mid-year financial check-in since we're now halfway through the year. And Bob, when you're doing that mid-year financial check-in, you know, where do you start? Well, first thing you do, right, you, you go back and you look at your New Year's resolution. Didn't all of you have the same New Year's resolution? You're going to eat healthier, going to work out more, going to get organized financially, and most importantly, I'm going to stick to my financial plan. Don't you think? How's that, how's that going for you so far, Bob? Well, I think for everybody, they all you fall back a little bit, especially now we're in the middle of the summer. You know, there's a lot of uh, good trans fats up on that boardwalk, pal. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I love that ice cream after dinner. Yeah, exactly right. So it's it's one of these things where it's important to monitor it. And you know, the big thing I think when you're thinking about halfway through the year is savings, right? You probably put a savings goal at the beginning of the year, and you really want to track to assess. Have you kept on top of your savings? Are you on track for the year or have you fallen off? Well, you know, really it comes down to, right, do you have a plan? All right. Now here, you know, here we are. It's 2019, right? 50 years ago, we landed on the moon. We have technology now that is so advanced that there's, you shouldn't do any of this manually, right? There's plenty of technology where it will tell you exactly, are you on track with your savings? Are you on track with your budget? I mean, I use our 360 financial portal every day. Yes, that 360 financial portal is the best, right? I mean, I just love the fact that you can take literally everything that you're spending, you know, on different accounts, credit cards, you can tie it all together so you have all your expenses being tracked in one place. And there's a lot of free softwares out there that you can use that you can do the same thing, but use technology to your benefit because having a budget's hard and it takes a lot of time, it's not fun. So if you can have everything automated for you, Bob, to me, that's like the key to success with having a hey, real right, budget. When I hear budget, I hear diet. You know, Who wants to count <laughs> calories? Who wants to count pennies, right? So the nice thing about these, these tools is that it just it pulls in everything that you spend on your credit card, everything you spend on your checking account, and it categorizes it and itemizes it. So you know exactly where you spent every dime and the push of a button. And it's so easy to stay on track. Yeah. Or if you're not on track, at least you know where you are. In fact, I have a client. We do it every quarter. We go up to their 360 portal. We look at their budget, which they were way off for their budget, by the way, halfway through the year. We just had that call <laughs> on Friday, this past Friday. Well, that's and a tough call, buddy. It's a tough call, but you know what? At least it was a good wake up call. You know, the husband yep. said to his wife, like, hey, like, look, we got to get this in check. Whereas, had we not had that call, not reviewed these things, at least they know where they stand and they know what changes. We looked at their budget, we were able to look at the line items and say, hey, well, if you cut this, this, and this out, and uh, we do this, then we'll get we'll be on track for our savings this year. So that monitoring piece is one of my favorite Bobisms. Like you always say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And one of the great ways to do that now is with technology. And another you know, thing, Bob, the other thing is you can't you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a lottery ticket. So you know there's certain things that you absolutely got to take advantage of. You can put nineteen thousand in your four hundred one k. You can do six thousand as a catch up if you're over fifty. Same thing with your IRA, six thousand plus another thousand. You know, the market's up big this year. All that savings has made a lot of money for you. Yeah. And that actually brings us to, I would say, the next thing on your checklist should be if you're saving, where are you saving your money? And one of our famous sayings, Bob, is money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can have invested. It's a really good time to assess. Did I get my 401k contribution in for the year? Did I max out something like a health savings plan? 
where that can be a tremendous deduction for the year. And you can make sure that you're doing all the things you can from a tax efficiency standpoint, because really there's a lot of benefits there that you want to be looking at. And here's a great time to review that to make sure you're doing it. Yeah, you should pick up the phone Monday morning, call your HR department, find out, am I maxing out my contribution? Am I able to contribute more? Because you know, if you have it taken out of your paycheck, you don't miss it. If you wait till December, when you're trying to figure out, you know, well, do I buy my son a Christmas present this year or not? You know, it, it makes it a tougher decision. Yeah, that's right. If you plan for it now, you can make sure you're maxing out those benefits so you're not scrambling at the end of the year. And the other big thing is, Bob, we're at an all-time high in the stock market right now, right? Right now, oh, the yeah. major U.S. Yeah, all the major indices are up right now. And one of the most important things you need to do with your financial plan is you need to rebalance your portfolio. So right now, so with things at all-time highs, it's a really good time to be proactive about making adjustments to your portfolio, Bob. It's actually do risky your portfolio, right? You know, it's like when things go up in price, it doesn't make them a better value, right? It's more valuable in your net worth, but in terms of you know downside risk, it increases dramatically. And there's plenty of undervalued asset classes out there that you can rebalance your portfolio into right now. Yeah, and I think December is a great reminder where we forget now because things are going well that the market fell off a cliff, and that's not the time you want to make investment decisions. You don't want to be reactive because at some point, markets will sell off. Unfortunately, we don't know when that magical date is where we'll be on our yacht. But in the meantime, it's a great time when the wind's at your back, things are going well to make those proactive adjustments in your portfolio. And right now, with the markets an all-time high, a great time to look at your, you know, go back to your financial advisor, your planner, who you're working with, and just say, hey, let's review everything here. Is it time to take profits? Is it time to reshuffle the deck to make sure I'm protecting myself for retirement? If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is bring in those statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you that 360 financial portal so you can look at your entire financial picture at a bird's eye view, and we can start looking at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in these investment portfolios. Everything from mutual funds, annuities, life insurance products. We're going to show you where the high cost is in your portfolio, show you how to reduce cost so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Markets are at an all-time high. Do you have the proper mix of assets? Are you protected? Are you making the right proactive moves? Bob and I are going to show you how to properly diversify your portfolio and protect yourself against the next market downturn. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. How are you going to replace your income when you're retired or if you're retired now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio with the least amount of tax to create an income stream that you can't outlive. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, thebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on thebullish.com. Get a clear picture of your finances. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, recovering from money mistakes is really easy when you're young. But once you're in your 50s and older, it becomes a different story because time just isn't on your side anymore. So I thought we could discuss some of the more costly financial mistakes you really want to avoid, especially when you're getting closer to retirement. And one of the bigger ones I think of is Social Security. It's really important to take Social Security at the right time. It really is, right? And, and it's, a, it's not a decision based on just your earnings. If you're married, your spousal's benefit is just as critical, and it can be a lot more if you claim your Social Security properly. There's so many different ways to do it. 
you just helped mom and I claim our social security. I just got my first check, by the way. So thank you, son. Hey, congratulations, Bob. You're finally on the dole. <laughs> I'm finally on the dole. You know, after all those years of putting it in, it's really weird to get a check from the IRS. Usually I got that envelope, I'd break into a cold sweat knowing that, uh, you know, knowing it was coming. Yeah, so Rod, that was a brilliant strategy. I mean, I was going to wait till I was 70 to take my Social Security at the maximum benefit, but it turned out, you know, your mom, who was a homemaker, is entitled to half of my benefit if I started drawing at 66. You know, it only works for people of a certain age and born at a certain date, but again, having an advisor you know, put lots of money in my pocket, which would never would have happened had I just done this on my own. Yeah. And the thing is, there's so everyone loves giving an opinion on social security, right? Like, oh, obviously wait till 70 because that's the biggest benefit or wait, I'm taking at 66 because I don't want to, I'm going to worry that the, I don't want to worry the government's going to run out of money or take it at 62 if you're not working. There's just so many different ways to take it. It's really got to be customized for you. So don't just take with a grain of salt someone's advice on that. The other big one, Bob, is you know, not Rod, having- I'll tell you what, let me add something else there, buddy, before we move on. You know, the people at Social Security have been very, very helpful, and they're, they're very knowledgeable. But if you don't know what questions to ask, they can't give you the answers. That's why you really should not go there by yourself. You shouldn't get on the lo- online with them without you. You need an advisor to really take you through, you know, the various claiming strategies because it means a lot of money to you and your family. Yes. And it can make your head spin if you have to go at it alone. So it is good to have someone help you, guide you, get you the right options. Another big mistake, Bob, that we're seeing a lot of you make right now is not having a long-term care plan. And the numbers are staggering, right? That 7 out of 10 people turning 65 today will need some type of long-term care during their lifetime. That's a crazy number. Yeah, it is. And it's very expensive. And I want all of you to realize right now, Medicare does not cover long-term care. Remember, Medicare does not cover long-term care. So many of, of our clients who've come to us and asked about that didn't realize it. And, you know, Medicaid doesn't either. Yeah. And they're going to be costs out of your pocket, out of your retirement portfolio. In fact, the cost ranges can be from $20 per hour for a home health care aid to over 7000 per month, Bob, for some sort of private room in a nursing home. You've got to account for that in your portfolio or you have to get some sort of long-term care policy, but it has to be addressed. You can't keep that out of your financial projections. Yeah. If you don't plan for that, Ry, you could run out of money very easily in your 70s and 80s. And uh, and by the way, I I do want a private room for my uh, long-term care. (laughs) I'm making a note right now, Bob. Thank you. All right. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) The other thing that we see a big mistake right now is on really two sides of the spectrum. Either We talk about this a lot on the show, but you're either not taking enough risk with your portfolio, and that means having too much money in cash, earning 1% or 2% if you're really lucky, or on the other side of the spectrum, markets are an all-time high, you let your portfolio run, and you have way too much money at risk, and both of these can be catastrophic, Bob, for your retirement plan. Really can be, right? Because investing is really psychological more than it is you know, doing the blocking and tackling every day, putting money to work. You know, you, you tend to want to be more aggressive when your portfolio is up in value. So we all had a really great statement in June and we think, wow, you know, now's the time to really put the pedal to the metal. But that's the worst thing you can do. And when things get tough, like in December or back in 2008, when we had the financial crisis, you tend to get too conservative. So either way, it can be very disastrous, you know, to your financial goals. Yeah, And the thing you have to remember is when you're retired, you could be retired for 20, 30 years. That's a long time. And you need what we call the right balance between conservative and risk assets. And getting that right mix is so critical, Bob. And I have to say from everyone that comes into our office, and we see a lot of people every month, it's very rare that you actually have that correct. And a lot of it is just the fact that you probably put it on a set it, forget it, right? You put your money to work, you didn't look at it, and you don't really know what your allocation is. Yeah. In the last 10 years, that's probably been good. You probably made a lot more money than you would have had you done it properly. Hey, Ry, some people might argue with me, hey, by not being a proper allocator, by just ignoring my portfolio and letting it compound, you know, the market's going straight up for 10 years. So I'm I'm probably smarter to do that. I mean, do you see any problems with that? (laughs) Well, again, like you said before, if you get another 2008, you don't have the time to make it up like you did 10 years ago. You're 10 years older now. The other thing is, Bob, I think most of us actually probably took money out of the markets we're nervous and we never got that money back in. So now we have a big chunk of our portfolio just sitting in cash, earning very low interest rates. And we never figure out every time the market goes up, we think, ah, I can't get that money invested now. I need to wait. And every day that you're waiting, 
you're losing against cost of living purchasing power, which is a huge risk. Yeah, right. You know, you're so right. Most likely, since there's $8 trillion sitting on the sidelines, many of you took money out of the market in 2008. You've been taking money out every year since then, and you don't have it invested. And again, you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. You have to be invested to take advantage of markets that go up. So being too conservative can be deadly to a financial plan. And I'll just mention one other thing, Bob, is it's not an all or none proposition. You don't have to put all your money into the market per se, right? It's about putting your money into a mix of different assets, everything from bonds that come due to having your money spread out over different markets. But the key is you've got to get that money working better than what a cash account is because it's just not doing you any favors. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. Hey, it's a full holistic review where we look at everything. It's the only financial review you're gonna need in 2019. So gather all your statements, Put them in a shopping bag, stick them in a folder, pick up the phone, give us a call, set up an appointment because we're going to sit down with you and we're going to review not just your entire net worth, but your, also your portfolio and look and see if you have what we consider the three key elements of a successful winning strategy. Diversification, low cost, high income. You want to be certain that there aren't any hidden costs or any risk in that portfolio. Risks that are only realized in hindsight, that's after you usually lose money. Fees. I mean, who wants to be overcharged? I know I don't. Many of you have portfolios where you're paying unnecessary costs that are hidden and buried deep in the prospectus of that mutual fund or that annuity contract. And income, well, you know, you can't buy lunch with relative performance. You need to have income. You need cash flow in your portfolio. You need it to be reliable. You need it to be repeatable. And you need it to come in, especially once you retire, to fill that gap, that income gap that we all have once that paycheck stops coming to our door. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together for you into one comprehensive total financial master plan where we're going to answer the age-old question for you and your family. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that we've been perfecting now for over four years. That's right. For our families, been helping families just like yours for over four decades now, helping you get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. We'll do a complimentary review at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's a shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. Time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? You know, Rye, financial propaganda is about keeping you from investing based on your goals, from keeping you in the, in the financial markets. And I'll tell you, the one thing that's been rearing its ugly head here recently in the financial propaganda columns, and you saw it on, on the TV show you're on recently, and that's politics. 
Yes, yes. It's uh, it's going to become more pervasive as this election cycle starts to heat up. Yes, I mean, I get this title and barons. The specter of a Democratic president is bad for the markets, investment manager says. Welp. Statistically, I don't know if he's right about that, Bob, but uh, tell me more. Actually, it was a she, and she's a great portfolio manager. But the fact of the matter is, if you go back over history, the markets actually do better under a Democratic president than they do a Republican. But over the last 200 years, it's an even draw, right? doesn't matter who sits in the White House. (laughs) Well, I think it's Warren Buffett who said, I never delay an investment decision because what's going on in Capitol Hill which means if Warren Buffett, the smartest investor, doesn't care what's happening in politics when he makes an investment decision, why should me or you, Bob? Well, because that's what the financial media does. That's what this, the financial propagandists do. They, they scare you into reading their articles and paying for their advertising so you don't invest properly. So here's, here's a little thing I, I think everyone to think about, right? You know, the market's been going up since the day you were born. Since the day I was born in 1953, since the day you were born, since the day your grandparents were born, Market's going up over your entire lifetime. How many of those periods was there a Democratic president or a Republican president or a Republican Congress or a Democratic Congress? You know what? You probably can't even figure it out. You know, again, it it really doesn't matter because the market always goes higher. That's right. That's right. And that has more to do with our economic system, I I would argue, than, you know, the bureaucracy that's going on in Capitol Hill. And it's important right now, especially as you're putting your goals together for retirement or retired now, that you don't let the media dissuade you from getting into the right portfolio for your goals. And I could see that happening here where it's like, well, maybe I'll just sit in cash and wait for the election to come. And the perfect example, Bob, is last election is a lot of people said that well, as soon as the election was over, the market skyrocketed overnight. So if your money wasn't invested already, you were already buying higher come a couple days later. So it's really, really critical that you stay invested and don't try to time these things, especially as the election cycle is coming into view. Especially politics, right? Politics are about people's belief on the way things should be. They're not about the way things are. And the way things are is we're in a big booming bull market with a phenomenal economic expansion. The Fed's going to, you know, perhaps cut interest rates coming forward. Stocks are making all-time record highs. You need to get your piece of the prize. Ignore the noise. Stay invested. Yes. Well said, Bob. That was, man, passion this morning. (laughs) Actually, Bob, an article I came across um, was actually pretty good in giving a warning signal where you shouldn't be putting your money right now. And I found an article talking about how bond funds drift into risky debt. So one of the big things going on right now is, we've been talking about this on the show today, is interest rates have gone lower and lower. And if anyone listens to our show, Bob, they know we don't like bond funds at all. And this is one of the reasons why. Well, I appreciate you citing my articles, Ry. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I do what I can. But you know, it's true. What's happening now is when you have a low interest rate environment, investors start to reach for yield. And the worst purveyors of that are bond fund managers. They have to overcome the extraordinarily high fees that they charge within their fund in order to pay you at least some return. And what they do is they buy high risk junk bonds or they buy bonds right now that they don't even pay interest. That's right. And you can't really see what's inside of a mutual fund. It's not very transparent. You really have to do some work to see what they actually own. But what we're starting to see in these bond funds is the managers are starting to drift into more risky bonds. And that becomes a double whammy because if interest Mm -hmm. rates start to go up again, which could happen, bond prices go down. So your bond fund starts to go down. Well, the stuff that's even riskier in there goes down even further and it becomes really hard to sell or what we call illiquid. And that's a tremendous amount of risk, Bob. Well, right. That's why I've I've nicknamed them over the 40 year period that I've been doing this. It's a hedge you lose, tails you lose proposition. When interest rates go down, Millions of dollars pour into your fund and buy bonds at lower interest rates, reducing your yield, even though you were smart enough to win when rates were higher. And then when interest rates go up, the price goes down. And a lot of people will say, well, people will buy more bonds when the the yields are going up. Well, I'll tell you what, when interest rates go up and bond prices go down, people in bond funds sell, 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 and you lose, lose, lose. I use the analogy, it's like going down in an elevator with a lot of people you don't like. (laughs) Uh, And it's scarier than ever right now, Bob, because if we look at where the money flows are, you would think with the market up at an all-time high, a lot of money's been going in the stock market. It hasn't. 
It's been leaving the stock market, and investors in droves are putting billions of dollars into these bond funds right now while interest rates are really low. So it's going to be like almost like a powder keg if rates start to go up again. And you can't predict when that's going to happen. Everyone's saying, well, the Fed's definitely going to keep rates low. Well, no one can control where long-term interest rates go. We always say the bond gods decide that. And that could happen tomorrow. It could happen a month from now. But the point is, you need to know what you own in your portfolio. And if you have bond funds right now, I would get out like yesterday. Yeah, and I want to be really clear about this, Roy. We're not saying bonds are bad. We love bonds. But they have to have a fixed coupon, a fixed rate of interest that they pay you every six months. And they have to have a date where they come due, whether it's one year or two year or three year or four years. Because if you have a fixed income portfolio with actually maturity dates, when that money comes back into your portfolio, when that bond comes due, if interest rates are higher, guess what? You get to invest at a higher interest rate. So you get to participate in interest rates going up. So it reduces the risk. It does the job it's intended to. What you do with a bond fund is you take a safe investment and you turn it into a risky stock-like investment. Yes. So don't get fooled. Don't look at a bond fund and say, hey, this is where I'm going to put safety in my portfolio. It's deceivingly safe. It's not really safe. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.